And the camera is rolling, so we are ready for a, another episode of Ink Transfer Drawing with Mark Zimmerman. My name is Mark Zimmerman, and I am with you virtually today as a visiting artist at the Sanford Clinic through the Sanford Arts Program. I just rolled a thin, thin layer of ink out on a sheet of plexiglass. And I'm going to drop some paper on top of that and do what's called an ink transfer drawing. And I have a puppy in the room with me. She's rolling balls at my feet. She thinks maybe we should play now. <laughs> and now she's up to get plain old fashioned get in trouble. Good. That's not distracting at all. No. Okay. That ink is inside a little rectangle of tape, and I can feel that tape. Yep. There's the corner. There's the bottom. Okay. So... I'm going to start what it looks like in about the middle. I'm looking at a photograph and this line comes down a little ways, gets a little wiggly. Puppy's name is Cleo and she's looking for trouble. <laughs> Cleo? Leave it. But it sounds worse than it is, huh? <laughs> so I'm looking at a photograph of a brown pelican, I believe. And whose idea was it to let the puppy have a ball of all things that could roll around in your studio? Hmm. Uh, the line here. I'm looking at his eye right now. I don't know that much about brown pelicans, but I can look at a picture and draw what I see. I've got a pretty good photo from an old Ranger Rick magazine. How much fun is that? Boy, I used to love Ranger Rick when it came every month. There's a brown pelican eye. <laughs> sort of. Uh, hmm. Let's, let's do this next. I ran out of room. That's all right. Most people can figure out that that head must be up there somewhere. Okay. Let's, let's add a little texture in here. Do this. The 
texture of feathers on wings. You have two choices. You can fake all the feathers, or you can draw every one. So we're faking them. There we go. Well, this is all pretty cool here. <laughs> Can you hear the puppy panting? She's having herself a little time over here. Uh, this is actually kind of a hard line because it does a lot of things, but all of them are little. And little things are harder to see than big things. Oh, don't bang into stuff, puppy. That's a good girl. She laid down on my foot, but that's okay. Yes, oh, she's going to chew on my leg. She's only five months old. She gets a pass. There we go. I think I want to do a little more, not much more. I'm just going to put some water in here. Um, I kind of want this to be at a sort of magical number in, in relationship to that 11 inch high image area. So I want a golden section of that number of the 11 inches. So Six and three quarters down, four and a quarter up is pretty much a golden division of that space. So that's not exactly a random spot I just found. Uh, I think that might be about all I need, except I'm going to very, 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 very lightly put in a little shadow here in the water. And here in the water. And maybe just up in here in this corner. Let's take a peek at what we got. Do we have enough? I think we do have enough. Just kind of evening out that transfer I did in the background. I think the pelican is fine. Eh. You know what? Let's add some darks with the pen here. And notice the whole time I've been drawing, I've not set my hand down inside the drawing. If I set my hand down, I transfer ink that way too. And now I'm going to use a little plastic bridge to span the drawing and let me get out into the middle of it without um,
without setting my hand down. Okay, now I think we're done. I'm going to get the inky plate out of here and uh, show you what a brown pelican might look like if I dry it. And I think I'm going to want a little board underneath it, possibly anyway. Oh, and I got debris all over the paint painting or drawing here. It's about to be a painting, so I'm going to put a board under it so I can tip it in various directions. And I can show you what I was looking at, too. You'll notice something about it right away. It is backwards, right? So transfer drawings all come out a little bit backwards. Well, exactly backwards. So, uh, let's start up in here, which is over here. Put a little yellow in. Okay, a little more yellow. Uh -huh. For now, I'm going to bring yellow right up here. And I understand that that's not yellow, but But I want the yellow under the colors that are there, so I'm going to put yellow down first. And then I'm going to actually mix a color, because I want about the lightest blue I can possibly get. Oh, I'm dripping paint. I'm just a mess here. Alright, the lightest blue I can possibly get. Put a little blue there, and an eyedropper, add some water to it, see how dark we are. A little too dark still. So there's no white paint in my palette, but I have um, water which lets the white or cream paper show through. And um, better get it over there so I can see my bird. Uh, alrighty. And this is so I'm looking at this side here, which has a shadow on it. So that, that side is the other side, right? Of course, we're thinking backwards here. It's one, one of my skills is thinking backwards. Just a little bit here and then here. So there's those really light, whoops, dipped it in the blue. I didn't mean to dip it in the blue. I meant to dip it in this watery blue. Okay. This comes up in here. Okay, uh, that should do it for the really, really super light blue. Let's get that out of the way. Let's come back with some 
orange will give the orange a little stir. It tends to settle quite a lot if you don't use it right away. Uh, Okay. The other thing I see that is orange is the what I would suspect would normally be the white of his eye and I see a little bit of that really 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 light blue that I missed. So I'm going to come back here with just a teeny bit of it the inside of his eye. Boy, that's a lot of blue mark. Pick some of that up. There we go. Spread it out a little bit too. Now I'm getting fussy. Uh, I think I can come back with a bit of a violet here. See how dark that is. It should be okay. Uh, and some of these feathers are just a little darker than I have them with the blue. Uh, uh, uh -huh. And I think I'm putting a little purple right in here too. Pick up where I pick it up where I have too much and put it where I need some more. And let those little little slash marks go in there like that. Now let's see how red this red is. It might be too dark. It should be okay. Uh, maybe anyway. Let's try it. What's the worst that can happen? Well, I know. <laughs> and then there's some red up here around this eye. It looks like red skin. Get it back inside the lines. Soften that red just a touch. Okay. A little blue, a little different blue than we had before. And there's some blue skin up in here too. Um, I think this is his pouch and then comes up in here as blue. I kind of already have some black up in there with the ink. So in some ways I can just kind of paint this blue. There we go. I might have to come back with black too. Well, we weren't done with blue. Just give it a little stir. Get rid of a lot of it. I want some kind of light lines here. I want to do them this way. Okay. 
Let's stir up some black, huh? I don't actually have black. What I have is a color called Payne's Gray. It's kind of a blue-violet undertone to the black. It's very, it's not that dark either. But, it's as dark as I have, so. And I kind of want to scribble in texture here. And again, that is in lieu of drawing all those feathers. So I'm going to come down in here, and then I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to try to paint around all those little V's that I made. Whose idea was it to make all those V's, huh? If I do that, I should end up with something that sort of approximates the look of those white feathers down the center of his back. Be nice if it was drier. I must be working a little fast. So again, laying around so that I leave little white tips on these feathers and again just suggesting that those feathers are there I mean I could count them and draw them all too I suppose that'd be kind of crazy There's the wing feathers. Let's mix up a little blue. And here's where tipping the paper helps because I can use gravity to bring that blue down where I want it to be. If it's darkest in this bottom corner, if I have a little extra paint there, that's okay. Uh, tip it this way so you can see. So there's my water background. A little sky background in here too. I think I'll get a bigger brush for that. And we'll just get it dark enough that it's darker than the blue on the bird. Let it run a little bit in the direction I need it to run. Good thing I got that big brush out. Now I'm painting little tiny triangles. Next to impossible when you have your brush really full, too. There we go. See how we're doing on time. Got a few minutes left camera will only let me sh record for so long and then it sh decides I'm done. <laughs> I 
Not one of my favorite camera features. At least not lately. Pick up a little of that. So I'm just drying my brush. It lets me pick up paint with it instead of putting it down. Yeah. Sign them always in pencil, so I had a professor in school who said just call them what they are. So this is Brown Pelican. Sign it. Zimmerman and date it 2020 and there's a brown pelican hope you had fun watching I had fun playing around uh, and if you like this take it home if someone hasn't beaten you to it already anyway there, there it is bye for now